Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Frank, for this uh, introduction. Good uh, afternoon, everyone. And uh, I would like to say uh, thank you for uh, Robert as well, introducing uh, uh, next year's Fabosch conference here and uh, uh, continuing this nice tradition to organize the Fabosch conference uh, on each three years, sometimes in United States, at UMass, sometimes uh, at uh, our university in uh, Budapest. And finally, I would like to say thank you for this uh, honorific invitation. I'm very proud to, to speak again here uh, at a forum organized by uh, UMass after my first speech I had in 2019 in frame of, 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 of uh, the Fabosch conference. And uh, at that time, I was uh, talking about uh, some issues related to uh, historic garden and uh, parkland renov uh, renovation. Uh, now, I proposed and I discussed with Frank to, to talk about, uh, to give a short overview about the Hungarian open space design and to show some uh, aspects related mainly to the background and to the approach uh, we have here uh, at Budapest, uh, the capital of Hungary. Uh, now I will share my screen. My first slide uh, having uh, here the title of my proposed uh, presentation and uh, the accent is on the contemporary open space uh, renewal in uh, Hungary. Uh, I think, first of all, I uh, have to introduce uh, very briefly the study area. Hungary is a small country in uh, Central Europe, having uh, approximately 10 million inhabitants, half of New York City's population. And 20% of the population of Hungary uh, living in the capital city in Budapest. That's why uh, we used to say that the country is a uh, hydrocephalic, having a very high economical and cultural concentration in the capital, which is not good. Uh, strategic uh, renovation of uh, open spaces in, in Hungary started uh, at the beginning of uh, 21st century. 50, 60 years ago, and uh, are still going on. Despite the care we uh, had to develop in an equal portion, the capital and the countryside, the most of the renewal projects of the, of the past 15 years were leading in Budapest. Uh, in my lecture today, today uh, I would like to give a short insight in this process, presenting a few recently realized projects. And of course, the time is limited and uh, doesn't permit to discuss in, in detail many projects. I can only show a few examples, a few case studies based probably on a very subjective selection. But you have to know that the main criteria I used uh, during the site selection uh, were the followings. First of all, I would like to show sites with different importance, type and scale. Secondly, uh, I consider very important to show uh, projects which presents a very clear message. And last but not least, in two of these 
three projects uh, I will present today. I have been personally involved from the beginning to the end, so I know not only the results, but the professional and social background as well. I think it's good to start with some uh, information related to the support of the open space renewals in uh, Budapest. We are talking about uh, renewal of uh, several hundred of interventions in, in the last 50 years. Uh, all of these in interventions are local interventions, site interventions, object design interventions in the city, supported by local, uh, municipal, or governmental uh, funds. And many of them were supported even by European programs and funds. One of the most important national programs uh, we had in uh, Hungary is the so-called Terköz project, which alone allowed uh, renewal interventions in case of, in case of over 100 uh, different sites. And this project defined as its main goal, the renewal of public squares and community spaces in a sustainable way, namely, preserving or re-establishing local identity, using innovative solutions and involving public participation. Some facts related to this project. The slide shows the, the number of ter Terkus projects realized in between 2013 and 2019 and uh, the first figure in the left side here uh, show a kind of repartization of realized projects per years. And maybe the most important is the figure in the right side, which uh, shows the types, the main types of uh, the renewed open spaces in the frame of these projects. We can see that most of the renewed open spaces are related to, to sport and recreational function. Approximately 30 uh, cases are dealing with uh, open space uh, renewals related to urban squares, public open spaces, and some of them are related to cultural functions or to trade and uh, business. Uh, looking uh, at the new realized projects, many uh, students of mine and many, many friends non-professionals used to ask my opinion about, about the professional output of these projects because uh, plenty of them are not uh, satisfied by the results. Actually, in most of the cases, uh, they were expecting for some explanations, uh, for example, why why the green surface is so small, why did they cut so many trees during the renewal process, why there are so much pavement, so much stone, so much concrete, why did not plant more trees, why the renewal process is, took so much time and so on. And it is very hard to explain to them that the thing they actually see on the site has a very complex background. There are many circumstances which led to this final product, which is the aspect of the square. And um, the result, what they see is actually the 
content and the background, namely the circumstances which influence this content represents the context, which is very, very different from project to project, from site to site. And in order to understand the project and the site is very important to see this complex relationship between content and context. From one hand, from other hand, it is very important to show, to explain very clearly the values and the innovativity of the design. The case to this, I, I would like to show you today, uh, search the answer to some questions like, uh, what role does landscape architecture play in the urban regeneration and heritage conservation? How to balance conservation and development during the process of urban built heritage renewal and how to maintain the uniqueness of different places under the unified planning objectives. And finally, how does an innovative and artistic open space design approach contribute to preservation and to the creation of a sustainable urban environment? Let's see the first project. We are talking about the high street of Budapest, the renewal of a very important uh, stream in the downtown of the capital. This was a complex downtown renewal project uh, and let me to say a few facts about uh, the background, about the conditions existing before the renewal. First of all, you have to see that, uh, for example, analyzing historic maps, as you can see in this slide, uh, we can conclude immediately that the, the open space structure, the, the urban fabric, the building substance, the streetscape uh, of the downtown makes it to be considered a historic environment. And the, the situation before the intervention, let's say 10 years ago, was characterized by a very intense car traffic, by a reduced pedestrian area by a lack of green infrastructure and a lack of biologically active area and by a totally missing physical connection with the Danube, which is the most important treasure in the city. This is, this is rep representing the center of the city, after all. The municipality organized at that time a design competition and the winner of this design competition was a ur urban design office called V Timpanon. And Of course, the starting point of the renovation concept pre prepared by this uh, office was that the, the high street is both a destination and a transit zone at the same time. And these two basic characters alternate along the full length of the axis, which is approximately three kilometer long. And there, proposal had three important pillars. First, they told that the renewal of the side streets and the preparation of the 
side streets on a very high pedestrian quality is very important because the side streets uh, representing the connection in between the city and the high street in between the Danube and the high street and to have to be very accessible by everyone. Secondly, they told that the squares, which are partial structural and cultural centers, have to be also very much highlighted being uh, the places, the sites where the most important institutions, the more, most important community functions are located. And finally, the intersections in between the side streets and the main street has, has to be as much safe and accessible as poss possible. And to, to reach all these aims and goals, they formulated some design principles. And the first principle formulated by them was that in this historical uh, downtown have to be used a very consequent pavement system. And they reorgan reorganized everything, actually. And the, the basic of the reorganization was that the different path for, for one from one hand was to reduce the car traffic as much as possible. And secondly, that the different patterns uh, represented by different type of pavements are marking different functional zones. So the paving systems is working as an informational system as well, as you can see in this slide. It's not just a simple surface, surface for locomotion. It is something to show directions, to show functions, to, to show uh, type of uses. Secondly, they uh, define that in such historical environment, it is possible to use only high quality materials. We are talking about historic ensembles and only natural stones are allowed to be used here. And they propose two type of natural stones the granite and the limestone. And they used very consequently the granite for the pavement uh, used by the cars mainly, and the limestone for the pathways of pay and pavement used by pedestrians. Here you can see a uh, street section immediately after the renewal and you can observe very well uh, this so-called uh, informational system realized with the help of uh, different patterns and uh, pavements. Thirdly, they formulated that um, the principles of universal design are very important. A survey proved that 55% of the users prefers the solutions offered by inclusive design and 30% can use exclusively such solutions. And Taking into consideration this historical environment, unique site specific special for this project design pavement from limestone helped preserving the local historical character of the downtown. Afterwards, a uh, fourth principle to 
use a maximum uh, ecological approach as possible in such very dense built and populated uh, uh, district. The, the street network of the downtown has preserved the medieval structure until nowadays. It means that most of the streets, including the high street, are very narrow with high uh, building facades. So the, the spatial and the light conditions are not ideal for, for plants. The high ratio of pavements required by the main functions also limits planting opportunities. And that's why beyond the, the maintenance and replacement of existing trees, the project has also aimed to increase uh, biologically active uh, surfaces, planting new tree alignments, planting small perennial beds and biodiverse vegetal surfaces, and of course, uh, water features. Important selection criteria of three species were, for example, the, the resistance to urban impacts and uh, horizontally compact crown form. That's why uh, the Pyrus caleriana chanticleer was uh, uh, chosen. This species meets the, the mentioned criteria and uh, Owing to, to its shapes, its lines provide an even attractive view complementing the existing trees with spreading irregular branches uh, like uh, Saltis australis or uh, Coleoteria paniculata. The general message and, and the the character and the effect of the urban axis of the high street represented uh, uh, by this uh, main street of Budapest are delivered to the users through design details. The design details are always very, very important because the details shows the real quality of a work. The, the details can uh, show the uh, high professional knowledge and the professionalism in design and in technical solutions. In case of the water features, the trend was also to use the limestone as a traditional material for Budapest, characteristic for the open spaces of the city and of the downtown, and to design unique appearance to enhance uh, local identity. Uh, Making a, may, making a feedback to the to the ecologically to the to the ecological um, uh, approach, I have to highlight here that um, everywhere in the downtown, the basement of the pavements was realized in a ecological way using the so-called we call it a flexible basement without concrete. And uh, you can see a photo here about the building process. And there is also a detail about 
uh, the technical solutions used in case of this um, uh, pavement realization. As a final consideration related to this project, I have to mention here that beside the, the preservation and regeneration of a typical and traditional streetscape in the downtown of Budapest, uh, the High, High Street project marked the start of the propagation of the concept of universal design in Budapest. It was approximately nine, 10 years ago. Since then, the, the principles applied first time at the high street, consequently determine the open space design attitude uh, in the whole city, moreover, in the whole country. So, this was a uh, very positive project and example uh, as a first one in, uh, in Hungary. The second project I would like to show you is a totally different one, a small one, actually. Here you can see the location and some um, contextual information related to this project. It's about a small pedestrian street located uh, nearby the city center. In the proximity of the downtown and it is located also in a very dense populated uh, historic urban environment in the 13th district of Budapest. Uh, let me to tell you some additional infos as well. The street uh, is located at the entrance area of the Comic Theater of Budapest. This is the building of the Comic Theater. And Accordingly, the street is a meeting point before and after the place, serving as, as a site for open air performances and exhibitions as well. And the request of the client, the client was the municipality of the district, the, the request of the client was to improve the functionality of the place and to create a very aesthetical, high quality visual impact on the site. In the same time, they requested to make something uh, so-called very traditional, very Hungarian one, symbolizing uh, the word of Hungarian operettas, characteristic to the repertoire of the comic theater. So the task was to make something very Hungarian. This is a request which maybe is easy to fulfill on the countryside, but not in the certain district, which is maybe the most uh, cosmopolitan district of Budapest. Uh, eclecticism uh, dominates the architecture here, and uh, we, we can meet here buildings uh, built in Palladian style, uh, in the style of uh, uh, historicism uh, from the second part of the 19th century in Art Nouveau, in a modernist style and even in a postmodernist uh, manner. So uh, this request to make something Hungarian and very traditional was possible only in a very abstract way. And uh, let's see the proposal we did it. We, we told that uh, 
the only solution in my interp in our interpretation is to uh, make a conceptual design and to be very Hungarian, of course, uh, the proposal was inspired by a Hungarian folk motifs. Uh, the main idea of the appearance was based on the motifs of uh, Kalocsa embroideries. Simplified, of course, in a minimalist and uh, functionalist uh, interpretation. Maybe I have to make a parenthesis here and to, and to highlight that, in my opinion, abstraction is always needed in similar cases because the very strong and very direct symbolic elements can induce tension both on professional and social level as well. As you can see, We had a, maybe we can say that we had a very strange choice of materials, but uh, the steel painted in red was inspired by the atmosphere of the indoor space of the theater as well. The theatric vine red velvet color stylus steel bunting has the role to designate each functional element on the street. The new promenade forms a bay along the Saint Istvan Boulevard, providing leisure opportunities in the vicinity of a very intensive uh, traffic. And the functional elements were integrated into a geometric spatial composition, as you can see here, enlarging visually the narrow street. The benches, water features, parapets, green surfaces, plantainers, uh, bicycle racks, uh, lightings, uh, were integrated in one object. This is one huge object. Make it very sculptural, just like a contemporary work of art placed uh, alongside of the of the street axis. As a visual impact, I have to highlight here that the red steel provides a, a strong contrast with, with the white limestone. We used again limestone here because it's very traditional uh, for Budapest, as I mentioned uh, before. And I think this project is a uh, example showing the transformation of a gray by car circulation dominated downtown street into a colorful multifunctional open space. Um, following this example, maybe the design of urban streets and squares may be reconsidered a bit because in our interpretation, the, the example shows how an urban open space can be transformed in a way to preserve the historical roots, being enriched with essential community functions, and through the provision of a new design become very representative place of the city, a very unique, a very local and specific for the site. The third project is a very similar one, but totally different. 
as you can see, is located there by the second project on the other side of the comic uh, theater of, of Budapest. And uh, the context now is totally different uh, comparing with the previous one. It was a project supported mainly by the local government of the district as well. And uh, here maybe I have to highlight that the integrated development strategy of the district puts a strong emphasis on the construction and renovation of uh, public uh, spaces uh, involving local communities. The, the conversion of this Holan Erner Street into a pedestrian zone is one of the first uh, projects in the district, which was based on a larger public participation. It was actually a kind of sensitization of the local inhabitants of the population uh, uh, to the global climate uh, change uh, challenges uh, and uh, to some issues related to biodiversity, uh, urban heat island, rainwater management, and, and so on. The context, as I mentioned, is totally different uh, comparing with the previous project and was mainly influenced by the existing technical infrastructure represented by the utilities located underground. Those are representing always an uh, important condition in design process, and it is always, at least in Hungary, a huge challenge. Looking at this slide, the first picture shows the chaotic disorder of the public utilities which are representing the main obstacle, for example, of the three planting in such situations. And uh, representing a constant source of problems for the open space renovations. Everywhere in Budapest, not only in this particular location. The second picture is not an um, avant-garde painting, is a nice picture showing the protection zones, different colors showing the different protection zones related to uh, different utilities, pipes, underground networks. Buffer zones defined and required, as you know, by law, and by local reglementations as well. And the third picture is the layout, the master plan or the design we finally uh, created uh, in this location. A few words about the design approach. It was again a very conceptual one and supposed to take as a starting point and as an advantage the existing and problematic underground infrastructure. As you can see on the, on the slide, the first figure is a hand drawing, is a, is a first sketch. And uh, the basic concept of the open space renovation design was derived by or from this zigzag line uh, of the underground uh, network of public utilities. Accordingly, in the concept, the, the pattern of the street pavement, the composition of different functional elements and units, 
like areas to lease, uh, bar terraces, leisure grounds, green spaces, are following uh, this invisible underground pattern. The idea served as well in the same time as a kind of urban environmental educational tool for the involved population and local communi community, helped, uh, helping us to explain to them this chaotic underground system we have always to take into consideration during a design process. Looking at this project, at this design, at this formal intervention, they can imagine always the underground map of the city and to realize maybe a bit easier the, the complexity of the problems uh, what uh, the designers are facing during the design process. And of course, uh, comparison before and after, uh, the, the photo did after show another objective was uh, uh, created here, the so-called Garden Street, where instead of usual wall-to-wall -wall pavement, the, the green space considerable increased and became a beloved uh, pedestrian street of the, of the district. Uh, I would like to make some uh, conclusions to sum up somehow uh, my short presentations and I grouped my observations in three groups. The first one is a very short one and we have to consider that in the last 10 years, the Hungarian open space design was very productive and very efficient. Why? There are many reasons. First of all, we had a growing economical background and a generous financial support at the local or municipal level, at governmental or national level, but even at uh, European Union or uh, international level. Uh, I have to mention here the national development strategies as well, which similarly to the international trends, highlights, of course, the importance of the nature-based, climate-friendly green solutions and developments in urban environment. So uh, big support from this point of view as well. And of course, it's very important to mention here that the landscape architecture became very popular, not only in Hungary, but in all East Europe. The society started to understand the, and to recognize the importance of this profession, which is the most able to shape a human, healthy, and comfortable environment in the cities. Secondly, the design of public open spaces contribute to the environmental sustainability. And here is very, very important that the environmental sustainability doesn't mean always and just the green pillar of the development. We all know that ecological solutions are primordials in the improvement of our everyday life. And in long term, only ecologic based solutions 
guarantees the survival of the humanity on this planet. But some innovative aesthetical design solutions, creation of dynamic structures reflecting on the right use of open spaces, on the functionality, on the liveability of our open spaces are also very important. Mostly in cases when the ecological branch, the ecological pillar in this development, urban development process, in spite of our intentions, cannot be very efficient due to some very objective reasons related mainly to the conditions existing of our urban environment, very dense setting in, uh, very archaic urban fabric and structure developed during the centuries with arrow shaded paved streets. A well-designed aesthetical open space with artistic charges and contents can considerable increase the user's comfort feeling, help to be the open spaces, democratic safety, and encourage a wider range of people back to the street. Helps to be the open spaces more easily maintained and managed. Produce multifunctionality. Show flexibility to the new, very fast changing requests of users. Thirdly, a very important conclusion is that the design process started to be in the last 20, 50, 10 years, a very complex one. Nowadays, maybe we can call it a mitigation process because from one hand or on one side, we are as designers and landscape architects. And on the other side, we have the employers, the professional partners like architects, utility designers, urban planners, traffic designers, gardeners, etc. We have the reglementations, urbanistical loyal reglementations. We have the local communities, the, or, the governmental offices, not nature protection, monument protection, the emergency management, the fire department, the civil different kind of civil organizations, uh, maintenance companies and, and so on. And the goal is to put something on the table which is able to satisfy everyone's needs. That's why I call a mitigation process. And at the beginning, the landscape architect as a um, general designer have to create a master plan which is acceptable for itself from professional point of view, but which is also accepted by each participant of uh, in this uh, mitigation process by the clients, by the professional partners. However, quality, unique urban character and preserved historic value have a growing importance regarding to the urban environment and as a last sentence, I'd like to say that characteristic streetscapes and appearance make cities more attractive for both visitors and investors, strengthening also their economic position. 
and the urban environment with features of the past preserved and integrated into a contemporary context is a source of inspiration for the citizens. Highlighting local identity and promoting sustainability. Thank you very much for your attention.